Hi, we are here to talk about the highlights from this year's State of Working India report. State of Working India 2023 has the theme Social Identities and Labour Market Outcomes. Our previous report, SWI 2021, was produced in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and dealt only or largely with the effects of the pandemic. This report, we have taken a step back and we are looking at the long-run relationships since the 1980s between India's economic growth, its structural transformation, and what that transformation has meant for its ongoing, enduring social disparities along the lines of gender, caste, and religion. I'll start with a few of the important takeaways. The first thing to note is that since the 80s and particularly since the 2004 or 5 period or so when economic growth started picking up, the Indian economy has been transformed. It has changed in many important ways and in many cases long-running disparities have started declining. For example, for years the proportion of Indian workers who had access to regular salaried employment remained stagnant. It did not change much between the 1980s to the early 2000s. Starting in around 2004-05, that proportion or that share started increasing rapidly, both for men and for women. So more and more, women, more, and more people had access to regular salaried employment. Secondly, long-running caste-based disparities such as over-representation of scheduled caste workers in traditional caste-based traditional occupations such as waste work or leather and so on started decreasing. The extent of over-representation started decreasing with economic growth. Third, upward mobility in terms of the kind of employment that people had access to also increased. Meaning that back in the 80s, say if a person was a casual wage worker, then there was an 80% chance that that person's son would also be in casual wage employment and not in uh, regular wage work. Over time, that percentage has fallen, meaning that sons of fathers who have casual wage work are now much more likely to have access to regular salaried work. And this has happened for general category workers, but it has also happened for scheduled caste workers, although to a lower extent. These kinds of trends point to the ways in which economic growth has created opportunities for previously marginalized groups. One of the important themes that we look at is how gender interacts with labor market outcomes. The nature of structural transformation in the Indian economy has been such that as the agricultural sector contracted, men in a sense exited from agriculture and we were able to secure employment in either construction or in services sector. For women, on the other hand, the exit from agriculture was not accompanied by a shift to another kind of employment. Rather, they just withdrew from the labor market entirely. So this has resulted in a fall in the employment rates for women from 2004 onwards up until recently. However, we also see that despite the fall in women's employment, of the women who continue to remain employed or able to get jobs, a larger share of them are in salaried employment. So in 2004, of the employed women, about 10% were in salaried work. Uh, and by 2019, this had increased to about 25%. However, note that salaried work here includes both informal as well as formal salaried work. Further, we also find that there has been a narrowing in the earnings disparity between men and women in salaried employment. So earlier in 2000s, women used to earn about 70% of what men earn. In more recent years, this earnings ga gap has narrowed uh, to the extent that women now earn about 76% of what men earn. It is likely that as women have been, have been getting more education, this has contributed towards narrowing this earnings gap and indeed this is the case. But we do find that the unexplained component of this gap, which cannot be attributed to say 
education differences or industry uh, industrial attributes still remains very high and is systematically increasing over time which points towards some kind of perhaps discrimination playing out in the labor market or other kinds of aspects which cannot simply be explained by the differences in the kinds of women and men who are in the labor market. Finally, we also see that in more recent years, there has been a pickup in women's employment rate. Uh, so even before COVID, there has been an increase in employment rate for women. However, this employment rate has to be increase in employment employment rate has to be seen with some caution, because this increase has largely been in self-employment, especially in unpaid family work and largely in agriculture. Alongside this increase in self-employed uh, women, there has also been a stagnation in earnings in self-employment. Finally, in more recent years, there has been an uptick in women's employment rate. So pre-COVID and even from 2019 onwards, we see that there has been an increase in employment rate. But this employment rate increase has to be viewed with, with some caveats. One, the increase in employment rate has largely been in self-employment, particularly in unpaid family work. Further, the earnings for self-employment has also stagnated during this period. So even after the lockdown, even now, the earnings for self-employed remains at 85% of what it was pre-lockdown. So putting this together, we also can, this also suggests that the sum of this employment rate for women has largely been distress-led employment and perhaps is not necessarily pointing towards a healthy re-entry of women into the labor market. To pick up from that, you know, if one now again steps back from these immediate effects that Rosa was talking about, which are the effects of the growth slowdown of 2019 and the shock of the pandemic, we step back and we ask, what do we now know about the capacity of the Indian economy to create jobs or what is the connection between growth and jobs? Uh, and we have come back to this theme repeatedly in uh, all of our reports because it remains uh, the central question. And here again in this report, what we document is that setting aside this most recent distress-led increase in employment, the capacity of the Indian economy to link growth to jobs remains weak. What we mean by that is Year on year, if we look at the relationship, the correlation between how fast the GDP is growing and how fast jobs are being created, there is no correlation between the two things over a long period. What that suggests is that policies that are promoting faster GDP growth are not necessarily going to deliver faster employment growth. We need a different set of policies, a different imagination to deal with the jobs challenge. And what is even more interesting is that compared to other developing countries, India is an underperformer when it comes to linking growth to jobs. An indication of this uh, jobs problem is the continuing issue of youth unemployment. Uh, we've talked about various identities, uh, you know, we've talked about caste, we've talked about gender and so on, but uh, the educated youth constitute uh, you know, these are not only India's future, it's not only the demographic dividend, but also, unfortunately, uh, overrepresented among the unemployed. So the rate of open unemployment among educated youth is still at around 40 to 42 percent, uh, despite the fact that there has been a small decline in unemployment rates uh, in the last few years. The levels remain very, very high. Now, the interesting thing is that this unemployment rate does fall from the high of 40 to less than 10 percent and then less than 5 percent as people get older. So we know that eventually young people, educated young people do find jobs. But what we don't fully understand is what kind of jobs they find and whether they are, there's an aspirational match or is there a mismatch between what they expected to find and what they end up finding. Some of these kinds of issues will be picked up in our later work and I'm sure these findings that we've talked about, this one as well as the other findings discussed, will uh, promote a lot of interest among researchers, policymakers, and so on and contribute to further research to understanding these important issues. The report will be available for download at www.azimpremjiuniversity.edu.in. We look forward to hearing your comments and feedbacks on the report.